for Christian fiction 2023, this is it right here for me. Like this, this is that book. I'm calling it now in April. This is that book for me right at this moment in time. Miss Gabrielle Meyer, thank you for your pen, sis. Okay, it was you did it was well written. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a Christian fiction review, okay? And this book is called When the Day Comes. I'm very excited about this book. I am highly anticipating the second book because this is the first in a series and I'm looking forward to it. So if you want to see or hear my review actually, then go ahead and stay tuned. First off, I want to say that the author did a really good job with this cover. I think that the cover looks really, really good, but we're going to go ahead and read the back of this because I don't want my review to be too long. I have the gift of gab and I try to get through these reviews and not make them too long, especially when I'm just reviewing one book. So let's read the back of it. How, how would she choose knowing all she must sacrifice? Libby has been given a powerful gift to live one life in 1774 Colonial Williamsburg and the other in 1914 Gilded Age New York City. When she falls asleep in one life, she wakes up in the other. While she's the same person at her core in both times, she's leading to vastly different lives. In Colonial Williamsburg, Libby is a public printer for the House of Burgess, House of Burgesses and the Royal Governor. Trying to provide for her family and support the Patriot cause, the man she loves, Henry Montgomery, has his own secrets. As the revolution draws near, both their lives and any hope of love are put in jeopardy. Libby's life in 1914, New York, is filled with wealth, drawing room, conversations, and bachelors. But the only work she cares about, women's suffrage, is discouraged, and her mother is intent on marrying her off to an English marquis. The growing talk of war in Europe only complicates matters, but Libby knows she's not destined to live two lives forever. On her 21st birthday, she must choose one path and forfeit the other. But how can she choose when she has so much to lose in each life. Okay, first off, let me just say that this book is completely different from anything I've ever read. I don't know if I've said that already because this is my second time also <laughs> recording this video. So, uh, it, she's not necessarily a time traveler. Um, I believe the author, uh, Gabrielle Meyer, um, I believe she, the term she uses is a time crosser because she literally, if she is here today on a Thursday, she goes to sleep tonight and then she wakes up tomorrow in the other time on a Thursday. So she eventually gets every single day in both lives. She's not, you know, she wakes up the next day in the next life and when she goes to sleep it's again so she has two birthdays basically you know on her birthday she celebrates with her her family in uh 1774 with her mother and her sisters all the things and then she has another birthday when she goes to sleep that night and wakes up in 1914 if that makes sense i hope that i said that well so she's a time crosser not a time traveler because it's the same every single time and she gets every single day um, in 1774, her father has just died. He was uh, the one who ran uh, the printing business, but he's died and it's just her and her mother and her sisters and she's just trying to keep everything afloat. She's really in love with a, her childhood friend, Henry, and Henry is, you know, he's just trying to do what she's trying to do, keep his family happy and support the Patriot cause. And so sometimes because she is a crosser, she has information that obviously she can't really divulge she can't share it um no one knows that she's a crosser outside of her mother her father did not even know and actually it was um something that is genetic because her mother used to be a crosser and um you know she never told her husband and there's a reason why she never told her husband i cannot tell you that because that would definitely be a spoiler but um she is able to talk about it with her mother now because she is caught by one of uh, her workers. Um, they overhear her, her mother talking about it. So there's like some weird, there's some weird stuff going on just for the simple fact that one, she is already a woman and they have this printing company or this printing business and she is talking about things that she, she shouldn't be talking about or she 
she and, and she shouldn't know about right and someone overhears her and this person is also someone who did want to be with her i'm trying to keep it light because i don't want to spoil it but you would know by the time you read this story who i'm talking about he did want to be with her she kind of turned him down and he also um feels like he can do a better job at you know running the printing business than she can and so um that person does begin to to talk and they're being watched now and there's just a bunch of, of different stuff going on so um the point is basically she does get to a point on her 21st birthday well before her 21st birthday her mother in 1914 is really cold uh very she's not nurturing they don't have a good relationship they are very very wealthy and her mother only cares about her status and wealth and so she um, goes through this very dramatic situation in an effort to marry Libby off to someone she does not want to marry. Um, and there's like a bunch of scheming going on at the time. Libby, however, because she doesn't have her father in 1774, her original life with her mother and her sisters because he's passed, she does have a father in 1914 who does love her, does care for her, is nice and always been like sweet to her and loving towards her. And she is their only child. So she struggles with, you know, missing, knowing that she would miss that, especially since her mother in 1914 is not just cold to her and unloving towards her, but she's like that with the father as well. She clearly only married him for wealth, but um, she really does enjoy her, her servants. I don't know the exact name. She might even be considered a governess, but she really does enjoy her relationship with her. And even at one point when Libby tries to protest certain things that her mother is forcing her to do in 1914, her mother does, um, threaten her with firing her servant who she's very close to. So... It's, it's a lot, um, but it's really, really good. Like, Gabrielle Meyer did a great job with this. When I was reading this, I had, like, my coworker. I was telling my coworkers about it. Like, this, I was telling my husband about it. This was really, really well written, and it's not hard to follow at all. I hope that I've done a good job at trying to explain it. Um, but she does such a good job. And the only thing is that if she tries to change time, if because she's going back and forth to, to, with, between two different times, if she does try to change time, she forfeits um, she, she forfeits her time. Like she will get stuck in one time if she does that. So she can't do that um, for that reason. And that makes things even more difficult. She does, however, ironically come across another time crosser while she is in uh, 1914 Gilded Age of New York. So I just wanna say, if you are looking for a brand new series, if you are looking for something that is completely and totally different, then go ahead and try to uh, read this book. I think Gabrielle did a great job. I believe the beginning of May is when the second book drops in Y'all, I am literally like so excited for that book to drop because she did such a great job. The cliffhanger is amazing. There is romance in here, of course. What I've come to love about uh, historical fiction, because that's what this is, um, this is considered a historical romance. Um, it's just like the fact that it's just all of the history, right? Like as a, as a history buff, I really do enjoy that. And so... I'm just really excited that I came across this book. This is, outside of that Tony Evans books, has got to be like top for me for this year. So if you have not tried this book, go ahead and give it a try. I really do enjoy uh, the way that she writes. I really do enjoy, enjoy the way that she develops her characters within the story as well because you're jumping between two times. I believe when the book begins, she's 18 um, or is she 19? And so just seeing the progression within those two years and then obviously there is some progression afterwards because there is a time that is chosen. Um, and leave some comments down below if you read this book or if you have any suggestions of books that are that are like this. Um, I'd really be interested in knowing that. But y'all, is for Christian Fiction 2023, this is it right here for me. Like this, this is that book. I'm calling it now in April 
this is that book for me right at this moment in time. Miss Gabrielle Meyer, thank you for your pen, sis, okay? It was, you did, it was well written, very well written. This is my first historical romance. I absolutely love this book. It was really, really good and I highly recommend. So if you haven't gotten your hands on it, go ahead. Again, don't forget to do all the things. Like, share, subscribe. I appreciate y'all for being here and I'll see y'all in the next one.